Hi everyone, today is unfortunately a virtual event and assuming at least most of us were looking forward to the next travel. And Chantal and me were not only missing like business trips, but also private trips. And especially to go to such a nice place like the one on the picture, it's easier to take the plane. But basically every time I'm traveling, especially by plane, I'm a bit stressed in advance. And why is that? Because I have to pack my suitcase and I don't know who of you might know the game for children. I'm packing my suitcase and I take with me, but basically I haven't played this game not only when I was a little girl. Instead, I'm still playing this game today before the next vacation. And then I start to pack my suitcase and I take with me my shirt, my jogger, my cap, my pants, my boots, my hat, my sunglasses, my camera, my red dress, and of course my red perms, my flamingo, and my cue. So I mean, of course, everything I will need for the next travel, right? But once I'm done, it's always the same. Either the suitcase doesn't close or it's too heavy which becomes especially relevant when I'm traveling by plane and there are weight restrictions. So what I have to do, I have to unpack my suitcase completely and I play again the game. I pack my suitcase and I take with me. And sometimes this can be really frustrating, especially because some airlines also right now, they have um, changed the weight restrictions from 20 to 16 kilos. And here was the point I was starting and thinking and asking myself if there is a way how I can avoid this. So I was asking myself, first of all, what is the approach behind MBSE and can this approach help myself solving this problem? So basically that was really the starting point. Yeah, to think about this kind of presentation, model-based systems engineering, how to pack my suitcase right. And since I'm not the MBSE expert coming more from an application lifecycle management perspective as a Polarian consultant, I was asking my colleague and travel friend Chantal to help me with this since she is our solution architect for MBSE and also model-based production engineering. And fortunately, she is here today with me and together we would like to share with you our approach on this topic so that not only we are prepared for the next vacation, but also you. So, hey Chantal, good to have you here. Thanks for being invited. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to introduce you and also Chantal a bit like my understanding from MBSE based on this use case and then Chantal will give you a deep dive on this topic. So basically, I was starting to think about that my suitcase might be a system. But very quickly in our discussion, also in advance with Chantal, I found out that it's not only about my suitcase. Instead, it's about the full travel. So I had to rethink about not my suitcase, instead about a travel system. And this travel system is at the really first beginning a black box, which will be influenced by a lot of factors, such as the destination, the time, the reason for this travel, and also the way of traveling. And out of these factors, the conclusion of the system results, the so-called the system context. And based on this system context, we can start to think about the white box perspective with different subsystems. And one subsystem is, for example, the way of traveling. And here we are focusing today on the plane. And based on this, we're arriving at the subsystems of my handbag and also my suitcase. And based on existing travel restrictions on the, on the plane, we do have specific system requirements for the size and also for the weight. And out of these system requirements, we can start to create a first draft of a model. And this model is then the basic for the next step. So thinking about my personal needs on the suitcase, the specific stakeholder requirements. So for example, I would like to have some dividers in my suitcase to separate my sport clothes and also my dress. I would like to have like a hidden laundry bag and I also would like to have a green suitcase. And based on this stakeholder requirements, we can right now extend our first model step by step. 
And once this is done, I can then again play the game. I pack, pack my suitcase and I take with me. But this time in a virtual way. And thanks to this, I can easily adapt um, things to this and can identify quickly that, for example, I risk again to have too much stuff in my suitcase that, for example, my cosmetic case might, might be, for example, a separated subsystem and that I might violate it against flight restrictions, having the bottle of water in my handbag. And like this, I can easily identify and also adapt these kind of things in my virtual suitcase system without packing again my suitcase again and again and create even a 150% model out of this. So, I don't know what you think, but for me, that sounds really, really smart. So, and I would say from a really, from a high level first perspective, from my, from my um, understanding, at least the general MBSE approach understood check mark. But in the next step is the question how to structure this and how this really looks like. And that's where Chantal right now comes into the game. And she will now introduce as her view on the RFLP approach combined with the methodology of MBSE, and then we will see how the travel system is modeled. So Chantal, stage is yours. Thank you, Susan. First of all, when I explain MBSE, I start by highlighting that MBSE represents a particular way of thinking and mindset strongly influenced by the concept of systems thinking, which especially provides support for the innovative creation of products or systems in general. The terms of requirements, functions, logics, and physics from the classic RFLP approach thereby provide different views on the same system in terms of their purpose, degree of detail, systemic decomposition, and hierarchy level. You see, the classical RFLP approach has four views, where view means a certain perspective on the system of interest with its individual purpose. Of course, there are other approaches which slightly uh, are different, have slightly different views, but uh, from my experience, most of them ground at least in RFLP. On the other hand, we also need a methodology to guide us through the modeling process to create models that not just Susan and I, but everyone following the same methodology can understand and build. Now, today, we are talking about creating MBSE models, especially with Capella, which uses the Acadia method. So this is fixed for now, and I will only go briefly through the different steps of Acadia to explain how our system model is structured in general and how it has developed over time before showing the model itself. Basically, we distinguish between four different phases in the course of the system model development, which are passed through du during the development of the different views of the model. These are the operational analysis, the system analysis, the logical architecture, and the physical architecture. The operational analysis as a first step takes a black box perspective. That is, we look at our potential system from the outside and consider which framework conditions and actors in the system context might affect our potential system. In terms of our travel system, we look at what we focus on, including our requirements, what activities are associated with that, and how they affect each other. The functional analysis first defines the system boundary of our current system of interest. For example, we decide whether the entire travel system or only the subsystem of packing luggage is considered. We also define the purposes of the things that will become part of our system. Chantal, just one short question. What do you mean by purpose in this example? For our special luggage system, this means which vacation activities have an impact on our packing list and what purposes do the things on our packing list actually have to fulfill based on the planned vacation activities. For example, for the beach, we will need an underlay to sit on the sand. So this is the purpose of an item yet to be determined. The logical architecture deals with how our system should be structured in principle. This is where we assign the travel activities at the, and the purposes derived from them to the first structural components of our luggage system. In addition, we consider which types of objects would basically be able to fulfill our determined purposes and, if applicable, which alternatives exist for them. 
To stay with the example we just gave, the object to sit on could be a blanket, a camping mat, or a simple beach towel. In the context of our restrictions from the flight company regarding weight, however, the camping mat is probably not a preferable solution as it is comparatively heavy and bulky and therefore will probably not find room either in the suitcase or the bag. The physical architecture ultimately deals with the actual physical components of our system and thus determines the actual items to be packed into the luggage. So here, in addition to purpose fulfillment, the issue of weight and dimensions of the items play a crucial role. This is where the final decision is made whether to pack the camping mat, blanket or beach towel from our example and in which of the pieces of luggage they will end up. Okay, great. Thanks, Chantal, for this overview of the RFLP approach and also mapped to the Arcadia methodology. And now we are starting with phase one, the operational analysis and the black box perspective. Thank you. For the operational analysis, we first consider at a very high level of abstraction the context in which our system pack of packing luggage is actually located. Here we have a superordinate travel system that consists of the steps travel preparation, travel itself and travel follow up. From this we have pulled out the travel preparation in more detail and we see this view here in the diagram. There we have the steps like travel planning, travel booking, tra pack the luggage and it ends with the arrival at our destination. In addition, here we have to state our boundary conditions. Above, in the red rectangles, we can see the general conditions that will affect our luggage, namely the destination, the means of travel, the duration and the purpose of the trip. We had decided to fly to the south for two weeks, thus to a destination with a warm climate. Due to the decision for the airplane as our means of travel, we got additionally the luggage restrictions. These decisions we have recorded in the green box below left because of if they would change eventually, they would have to we would have to rethink the entire system and we need to be aware of that. We'll take a closer look at the requirements considering our trip purpose in a moment at the functional level during the system analysis. Okay, right. So that means now we have specified the framework conditions that impact our travel system from the outside. And now the next step is also that we have a look what kind of system and functional requirements we do have for the system. And therefore, let's start with the system and stakeholder requirements. And since we know that our system requirements strongly influence the system, we also have to think about them and document them in a structured way. And therefore, we're jumping into a professional requirements tool and getting navigated to the system requirements. And in this document, Chantal and me, we have already yeah, collected and documented all the necessary system requirements based on the means of travel and so on. And these kind of system requirements we have already linked and mapped to the dedicated stakeholder requirements and also to the restrictions from the plane. And based on this, we can easily get an overview which um, system requirements are in which status, for example, or how looks uh, how, for example, the traceability looks from the system requirements to the stakeholder requirements, and also what kind of coverage we do have on our system requirements. And so to summarize the first step, we have right now specified the framework conditions and we have structured the requirements in the operational analysis. And now the next step would be to talk also about our systems behavior with the means of the functional descriptions, right Chantal? Exactly. That means we have to take a deeper look from the black box perspective into the white box perspective and have to check how the system requirements affect the system. First of all, from the operational analysis, it is now clear that our system of interest should be our luggage subsystem with Susan and me, the airplane and the destination and activities in its system context. That means that the travel activities themselves are outside the system boundary, but anyhow, they clearly have a direct impact on our luggage. So in order for us to decide what things we have to pack, we must now first decide what the purposes are that our items to be packed are actually intended to serve. This is, of course depends on what all we want to do during our trip. 
That means we first need to describe the activities that are going to take place during our trip and thus also affect our luggage system from the outside. That we can see here in the bottom section of our diagram. Each green rectangle describes a travel activity and these are also indicated by the differently colored functional chains. Okay, fine. And, by, and based on this, we can map right now our system requirements with the dedicated um, model artifact from Chantal's model. And therefore, we're jumping first of all back into the requirements management tool and getting navigated to the mapping area. So, and from this view, right now we can start to work in two different windows. So, meaning we are opening also the model itself and from the left side of the view we do see the requirements and on the right side we do the model and the dedicated model artifacts and right now we can start to map via drag and drop directly the right requirements here the closing for the beach to the model artifact relaxing at the beach right up we're just mapping this via drag and drop and we're just putting this under the model itself so that we can see this directly the, the link between the model artifact and the requirement. Like this, we can go step by step with all the dedicated requirements. So for example, for the model artifact party, party at the evening, we can also map, for example, the right requirement. Let's just check. Here we go, closing for party. And we're just mapping these kind of information also via drag and drop to the model artifact. So this would be, at least from my perspective as a requirements management, the easiest way how to map and create dependencies from my requirements to the model artifacts um, out of or in Chantal's model. And of course, for Chantal, there are also some, some, further, some further benefits, such as, for example, Chantal gets an overview, for example, which of the requirements are mapped into this model. So for example, first of all, we can see, okay, how many requirements and which requirements are already mapped into this model. And also then in the second step, she can also get like deeper insights um, into this linking between the requirements and the model artifact by using the semantic browser and seeing, for example, further and detailed information about the requirement and the model artifact itself and getting, for example, an information about the owned relations, about the owned attributions and so on and so on. And Chantal, here's the question. Can we also already right now go ahead and map the stakeholder requirements with our model artifacts? At this step, Susan, there's a no. Up to this point, we only know what we want to do during our vacation travel. So for now, these are only the infect influences that affect our system from the outside. But now, based on that, we still need to determine the purposes of the items to be packed while considering them in the context of our travel activities. You could also say that we have to determine those functions that are inside our system. For this, we go into the pack the luggage function and describe the functions or purposes of the various items to be packed. Let me just pick out individual examples here. First, we have described the general process of how the suitcase and bag are packed. That is all the steps independent of the actual contents. These are all steps that are part of the travel preparation. Particularly highlighted in blue here is the functional chain check weight and rework since we now know from our restrictions that special attention is required here. After that, we created a function for each of our travel activities, for example, pack beach stuff or pack snorkeling utensils and added the function pack everyday stuff. We now add the detailed specific functions for that our items to be packed later have to fulfill so that we can also carry out all our travel activities. The function pack under light to sit on send we had already talked about. It can be found, for example, in pack beach stuff. And because we know the stakeholder requirements for the bag, we have already added the corresponding functions to the model here, namely pack sunglasses and ensure damage protection, or something like pack something to drink and ensure easy accessibility. 
Okay, so to summarize the second step, we have specified right now the planned activities, we have mapped the requirements to the activity artifacts, and we have created possible functions for each activity. And now we can assign all our um, all our activities, so the system items to the dedicated functions, so the purpose of our luggage system in the phase three logical architecture. Exactly. And to do so, let's now take a quick look at the sequence of our various activities during packing, which actually apply to every trip. Since we have to pay attention to the dimensions and the weight of 16 kilograms from the restrictions, the described process steps also include an iteration loop for the case that we may have initially packed too much stuff. Thereby, I added the luggage scale as a logical system component next to suitcase and bag and assigned the function weight luggage here because we want to use the luggage scale and not take it with us later. What you can see also here is that we already did another requirements mapping and have already mapped the restrictions from the requirements management system here. At the end of the day, what we're interested in now is to roughly know how our luggage system is set up. We now have a suitcase, a bag, a luggage scale, and ourselves as travelers, to which we now have to assign our functions from before. So we make an initial pre-selection to which items are likely to go in which piece of luggage based on their purpose. For example, I would rather have to travel the, the travel guide in my bag, since then I can also read it on the plane. During the allocation, I also noticed that we should use a cosmetic case for all the small items. I added that as a, as a logical system component of the suitcase and also already moved the functions pack toilet utensils and pack makeup and jewelry into it. And here, I can already see that we have violated the restrictions of the airline because we currently have liquids, namely your drink in the hand luggage. Of course, I have to take that corresponding function out of the hand luggage because it is forbidden according to the restrictions. Gone they are. Okay, great. Thanks, Chantal. And once we're done with mapping right now the system purpose with the system items, it's now a matter of finally deciding which things should be really integrated in our suitcase and into our handbag. And based on this um, next step on the physical architecture. Okay, and to do so, we have a look at how the suitcase and the bag are physically constructed and that we will see in this first picture. Um, the first model view here shows the physical structure that is represented by yellow boxes. Inside the yellow boxes, we find the higher level functions that our items to be packed should perform. And also there are already a few functions that relate directly to the suitcase or bag. You can see here, for example, um, the separate clothing for protection against crease uh, function, which leads to our clothing dividers, or the function that wanted to have a laundry bag, and here there is a dirty laundry bag as our system, um, physical system component. We now transfer this diagram to the view where we can see the items with their weight, which fulfill our identified purposes and should therefore be packed. Likewise, of course, we can see the assignment to the two pieces of luggage. Okay, great. And now I could also map my other requirements and check if we have met all requirements, right? Right. Okay. So, Chantal, I've seen how to build our luggage system according to this MBSE approach, and I have seen that I can directly map the requirements and restrictions also to the model artifacts. So, I do see a lot of advantages from your perspective. But, Chantal, honestly speaking, can you also explain what is the advantage, at least yeah, for me as a requirements manager in this context? I'm assuming it's not only about mapping requirements to model artifacts. Uh, I'm assuming there was, there's much more, right? Right, Susan. I can give you a simple argument for that. You meant that the restrictions regarding weight has changed from 20 to 16 kilograms. Now you can either enter this information in your requirements system and have it calculated. This is of course already a huge added value. But alternatively, you can also look at this information here in the MBSE system, but in relation to the overall context. 
And that's why we are now also briefly checking whether everything that we have packed actually fits into the luggage. We do this based on the new 16 kilogram restrictions and sum up, meaning we weigh virtually if all the restrictions are met. Unfortunately, our suitcase has currently 21.1 kilograms and is, as expected, initially much too heavy. But in our bag with only 3.7 kilograms, there is still some space. If we take out the hair dryer, the beach towels and the camping mat, then we have exactly 16 kilograms. That would still fit. However, the taken out things together have also 5.1 kilograms. So unfortunately, we cannot put all the, th the items into the bag either. Well, listen, Ch uh, Chantal, this camping mat is also, I mean, a bit too too big for the for the bag, and we still have the blanket, so which is also fine. It has only just two kilograms and would fit perfectly into my handbag. So let's take that one, right? Perfect. Let's take that one, and now the dimensions and weight fit. Perfect. Super. I think Excuse that's. Excuse me. A... Sorry for interrupting, yes? Suzanne Chantal. Just to let you know, you have five minutes left before the questions. So yes. Not Perfect. to rush you, yes. but just so you know. Perfect. Thank you. We're almost done. We're coming to the end. So basically, that's a, right now. That's a good fit, and we're also right now well prepared um, for our for our travel. And Chantal, from my point of view, this was a good overview of the procedure in the individual four phases. And yeah, thanks also for um, for your help based on this. And I mean, of course, this is just the beginning. So once we're done with this, then we can think and talk about standard travel systems. So your 150% models for the summer holidays or also for the winter vacation and reuse these 150% models and adapt these for an individual travel to make sure that um, we're well prepared also for our individual vacation trips. Because the next trip, either a business trip or also a private trip will come hopefully, hopefully soon. So make sure that you are not only prepared for the next business trip or vacation trip, instead also for your dedicated business use cases. And therefore we are right now looking um, for your questions. Thank you. So first question is how is Capella related to Siemens? Uh, and the person asking is mainly interested in the autonomous driving system context. But yeah, how is Capella related to Siemens? Yeah, so first of all, Chantal, shall I? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, so first of all, I mean, as we've already seen, you can connect, for example, Capella as a modeling tool to a requirements management tool, for example, into, um, into the context or into the solution part of Siemens, such as, for example, Team Center or even also Polarian in this case. Um, furthermore, we do have like from, from the Capella side, if we go one step further, um, we do have like a commercial Capella version, which is called System Modeling Workbench, which is part of our solution at Siemens. And based on this integration, especially to Team Center, we do have a lot of, yeah, a lot of um, further processes which combine the full, the full power of model-based systems engineering, um, yeah, based on this integration. I hope this okay. answers your question. I don't know, Chantal, if you have something to add. I have just one thing to add. Um, the, yes. import, the, the, the special point between this um, Capella and the SMW integration is if you use the system modeling workbench integration for Team Center, you have the possibility to get every model artifact as a single object in your, into your database. And you can reuse every single object for downstream process, processes as needed um, for overall lifecycle perspective. That's the big difference between a normal Capella uh, model and then still System modeling workbench model integrated to Team Center. Okay, thank you for your answers. I think that's uh, doing the trick. So now, question two uh, about the drag and drop of Polarion to Capella. Uh, the requirement is created in Capella. Is there any synchronization mechanism? Can we see? Uh, oh, the question has moved. Uh, sorry. Can we see the connection from Capella? There's a bi directional um, synchronization possibility. There are two different. Um, yeah, then both directions, there's a possibility um, to, to have these kind of bi-directional synchronization. Yeah, but you do need like for both for both um, sides of um, direction, you will need a separated licenses from Obeo. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that's okay for that question. So, and by the way, another question that's related is, is there any connector needed for this functionality to work with Polarian? 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically that's what I've just trying to, to, to mention there. There is a license needed. Um, it's a bit like the same integration from Polarian and Team Center to, to Capella or even System Modeling Workbench. It's a bit like the same the same way how you integrate the requirements tool to, to Capella or System Modeling Workbench, but you need these two different um, licenses from Obeo. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next question is uh, thank you for your great presentation. Uh, let's say that we have 300 requirements. Is there any way to show them all in SAB without making it hard to understand? Do you have suggestions for such a system? I think I can answer that. If you create your models in a convenient way, then all of your diagrams won't have more than, let me say, 15 to 30 artifacts. And I'm quite sure if, that not all your 300 requirements will apply to these artifacts which you have on your special diagram view. So on the one hand, all the requirements that are mapped to your model are as a list in your diagram browser. On the other hand, only the requirements you need in your special view are displayed in this special diagram. So I think it's not a problem to get a good overview, but I think you have also to have the content of your requirements in, a little bit in your mind to know where to map one requirement and to have all them into your system at the same time. And in addition, I mean, based on your requirements, you do have also, I mean, like like parent and child requirements, right? So let's imagine, for, for example, you're just mapping the, the parent requirement to the model artifact, making sure once you're jumping back into the requirements tool, then you see also the relation, the child to this, to this parent, which has been linked to the model artifact. Like them, you can also structure them a bit. Okay, thank you very much. Next question is, should you have both Polarian software and Team Center requirements, system hardware, and should you create a requirement in Capella, where will the requirement be synced to Team Center or Polarian or both? Interesting question. Shall I, or would you like to, to answer, Chantal? I, I, I think you should start. Okay, so first of all, I mean, from our perspective, um, we do see that you have like the, the overall system context in Team Center mapping these kind of the the system requirements um, to um, to the to the model artifacts in Capella or to system modeling workbench and once we're coming to the point that we have like an overall requirement for the software topic then we're jumping into an ALM um, into an application lifecycle management tool such as for example Polarian so then we got jump into the domain of software engineering this would be like the best practice or our Siemens approach based on this based on this views of course, there are also, I mean, customers, they are, for example, having already, in our case, Polarian in case, and they are, first of all, asking to link also there. They, for example, also have their system requirements in Polarian, would like to map these kind of information. This is also possible, but from a general perspective and from a, from a long-term view, it's always better to have, for example, the system overall context, such as also, for example, the mechanical information and so on in Team Center, and then at one point, you're jumping into the software domain. Um, where, you are um, where you're working then with, for example, Polarian. Okay, and just to add, I think the one part of the question was that requirements are created in Capella. If you talk about the integration with Polarian and Team Center, then you would always create your requirements either in Polarian or in Team Center and then map it to your model. And furthermore, if you want to do so, you could also map your Polarian requirement into Team Center to have all information on one place, but this would be an optional step. One last question. I like how the suitcase example explains optimization as the central challenge in SE, but most systems are more dynamic and their behavior is based on distributed software. So where is the boundary between system architecture and software architecture? Um, I, I think this, from my point of view, it would be the difference between working in the system context in the interdisciplinary way and the special discipline software development, which comes after the first first and initial multi-domain system architecture, if I get this question right. And I think from my perspective of MBSE, you would always define a multi-domain system architecture for all the disciplines and create a good overview of the interfaces and interconnections between the different disciplines, and then go into, for example, a software specific detailed um, design and have always in mind that there are some special interfaces you have to, um, to, have to bear in mind and, and get in, in, in your software right. <music>